so little feet. Firstly, uh, this first album that I'm going to review is certainly the, not the first album that I listened to when I fell in love with this band. I arrived on album three, Dixie Chicken, and then quickly went back to capture the first two. Um, so a little late arriving on the scene, but I'm very glad I did. And I did have the pleasure of seeing them live uh, in a, a double bill with the Doobie Brothers uh, at the Rainbow Theatre in London. And I'll always remember it because uh, Little Feet of Court were the support band and their set was so awesome. Uh, it blew the bloody, the whole uh, arena apart. And the Doobie Brothers uh, embarrassingly came on stage and uh, invited the uh, audience to give another round of applause to Little Feet. They were obviously overshadowed. So from that moment, I was hooked. So let's get back to uh, the first album and uh, how this band were formed. Well, Loud George met Bill Payne. Uh, when George was a member of Frank Zappa's Mothers of Invention. And Payne auditioned for the Mothers, uh, but he didn't join. Not sure why, but uh, Frank was pretty fussy about who turned out for him. Uh, but later they formed Little Feet, along with uh, former Mothers bassist Roy Estrada and drummer Richie Haywood, who uh, was in George's previous band, The Factory. Uh, Hayward had moved on uh, after the factory and become a member of the Fraternity of Man. And they'd had a huge hit, Don't Bogart that, Bog that Joint, because it was on the soundtrack to Easy Rider, the million dollar selling film. The name of the band uh, apparently came from a comment made by Mother's uh, drummer Jimmy Carl Black about Lau's Little Feet. Spell F E E T, but uh, George changed the spelling uh, because he he wanted to uh, uh, be affected by the Beatles. Now, uh, the genesis of Little Feet. Uh, George is the key member here, um, and there are three sort of versions battering around uh, as to how uh, he come came to leave. Little Feet. The first one is that he showed Zappa the song Willing and Zappa fired him uh, and suggested that he get his own band together because he was far too talented to be a member of uh, his band. Uh, and uh, the second version is that uh, of Zappa fired him uh, because he played a 15 minute guitar solo with the amplifier off. And the other version says that Zappa uh, again fired him because uh, Willing contained drug references, weed, whites and wine. And uh, Zappa, not many people realise this, but he was really anti-drug culture. Um, so anyway, uh, whatever way you look at it, uh, it was as a result of uh, uh, Frank Zappa that uh, George left and uh, met Payne and so the band was uh, formed with the other two that we mentioned and this first album uh, was recorded in August and September of 1970 and uh, released in January 1971 and nobody bought it uh, so I'm going to review it anyway uh, and uh, it's the usual format track by track so, track one on Little Feet then, Snakes on Everything. Wondrous bottleneck guitar from Lau greets their southern blues boogie. They certainly are specialists in that department. The piano uh, uh, parades the, into the guitar's territory, which is full of George, uh, and it's a, a wonderful start to the George Bill Payne uh, uh, marriage. Built on lead vocals, they have to be said. Lyrically, it's a reality check that you can't make it on your own, I think. So, track two then, Strawberry Flats. Jauntily collides 
with the tight bass from Estrada and Hayward's m Keep Moonlight drums. And then a wicked guitar solo hits your ears midway with Payne's rapturous piano. It's a travelogue Americana style song, uh, said one critic, and I'm not going to argue with that. It's a chaotic mix of blues tinged boogie rock. Lyrically, uh, we hear of Taxus. Your look, your reputation goes before you. And Waco, uh, although it's nothing to do with that tragedy there. But it certainly uh, suggests that Strawberry Flats was a small town in Texas and your desire to find a new one. Track three's Truck Stop Girl. It's a classy country folk rock uh, song. Uh, and, um, of course, this was uh, covered uh, later on by The Birds. I personally prefer The Birds uh, version, but this is pretty mean as well. Uh, lead vocals with a lot of passion uh, from Payne once again. Uh, he's the backbone to this song. That uh, uh, has a, a, a really catchy chorus, and it's a beauty, really, a beauty through and through. Truck Stop Girl. It's a love song about a girl who's at a truck stop and a guy who ends up dead as he uh, tries to get to see her following a road traffic accident. To track four, then, Bride of Jesus. Well, this is gospel piano at, the, at its superb uh, best. Sounds like it has a, a pace that warms you with good feelings. A country ballad with church-like keyboards e echo that sermon-like feel to it. There's some neat strings which are majestic. This is a powerful moving piece of music and George's vocals are full of emotions. Tri track 5 is the iconic Willing, a wicked folk song with Sly Bottleneck by guest Ray Kuda. It's only 2 minutes 24, but it's pure American Southern history. Wonderful song. Lyrically, it's a song about uh, 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 driving in all weathers to make a buck and have simple, simple uh, things in your life. Uh, and You'll do anything, really, to get a few cents to keep on going. The final track on side one is Hamburger Midnight, and it's a full tilt boogie blues. You can smell the sweat and beer. Payne's punchy piano and George's slide guitar are a mega mix. A band in full swing. The break leads to chaos, crowd noises, and then the reprise as wild as ever. And then the oozing slide guitar outro. Uh, lyrically, it's a simple tame of life's simple ups and downs. So flipping over to side two, the opener is uh, 44 blues and it segues in for how many more years? These uh, blues traditional songs, uh, written by Howling Wolf, and uh, wow, this is a tremendous a version of both. It's an old blues relic but they basically brought it back to life. There's um, some exquisite smoky style harmonica throughout. Rai Kuda steps in on slide guitar uh, so we know that that's five stars and um, the vocals um, from uh, George sound well reminiscent of the uh, owner of the song uh, the black owner, of course. Uh, so we get two for the price of one as well as they segue in. Estrada and Hayward are totally in sync in the rhythm section. And that harmonica, it's as good as it gets. Little Walter, maybe. Um, so, basically, uh, it segues in, as I say, to how many more years with a, a power ha ha harmonica. Uh, filter and then the cosy loose slinky rhythm takes us through the second part absolutely terrific 
Next up is uh, Cracking Your Door. There's a genteel vocal and piano intro before it uh, m moves towards a boogie filled bash. Payne highlighting on this track uh, as he did on the opener and then there's a blistering solo towards the end by George. It just stinks of class. Lyrically it's a tale about uh, learning uh, streetwise uh, issues quickly uh, particularly with regard to the fairer sex uh, and uh, needing to get out of town quickly as the girl uh, folks and the girl to an extent aren't that pleased with you and they potentially could be very fiery so you need to jettison out quickly. Next up is I've Been The One. It's a bluesy country ballad. Uh, Sneaky Pete uh, adds his uh, tasteful edge on pedal steel guitar. And there's some nice additional uh, piano by Russ Tiltleman who crops up on Little Feet uh, uh, um, albums throughout their recording career. Lyrically, um, it's uh, knowing you were special, uh, but the fears of commitment force you to not see it, and you make it so a need to show you're tough. I'm not quite sure what the hell that means. Uh, a need to show that you're tough, uh, and not be enraptured by a fear of commi commitment. Uh, so basically, get moving on it. Taking my time, track 10. This was covered by uh, Bonnie Ray on her album uh, of the same name. And it's a peach of a, uh, a song written and sang by Bill Payne. Nice uh, restrained strings on this. Uh, a stripped down sound with a touch of horn at the outro. Uh, lyric is about patience in a relationship and not to be rushed by the other. Good advice, I think. So to the last track, Crazy Captain Gunboat Willie. It's a whimsical up-tempo seafarer's shanty. Up-tempo for sure with a boogie shuffle in there somewhere and some snappy harmony choruses and a squirt of horns. Uh, reminded me a little bit of some of Sergeant Pepper's horn additions. Lyrically, well, we're aboard a ship and there's a lot of craziness and greed around and your head gets a bit twisted and you lose your bottle and uh, people lose their lives. So, this first Little Feet album, uh, there was never an, another album like this from this band. It was uh, a real sort of uh, a jolt when you heard it because it was so classy. Um, I arrived at it a little late because my introduction to this band came with the third album, Dixie Chicken, but I quickly went back and uh, picked this one up and of course Sailing Shoes which is the second. It's a classic. It really stands well as in time, and it underlines what a talent Lau George was. So if you've never heard it, you like boogie music, you like uh, blues, you like a touch of gospel, uh, and you like Texas style of music, get and find it. It's a beaut. The first album by Little Feet.